Hi everybody, and welcome back to the vlog. This is gonna be an update. Um, it's been almost a month since my New York trip, our adventure, if you will, happened. And I wanna tell you what's going on and why I haven't published any new videos. Um, exploring with Nug and Adam Brown's adventures. Spent a bunch of money had faith in me that the story that I told them was true, even though it sounded unbelievable. They had faith in me. I don't know, they did it. We found the car, we confirmed the car, and we confirmed without a shadow of a doubt that, that that's the car with the steering wheel, the lower dash that was exclusive to a 1971, 1972 Lincoln Town Car undisputable rim blown on undisputable we found it right over where i said it would be it's the car we also found the bone a lot of you guys have made comments that you know i'm going to get arrested there's no statute limitations on on murder which is correct and there is no statute of limitations on accessory after the fact it's the same charge so, why did I do this? And why did I pick this time? Go back a year and a half ago, two years. COVID was running rampant. I started watching YouTube channels. And I started watching this channel called Adventures with Purpose. Um, and I reached out. So I, as I'm watching these guys go into a body of water like this, and take out cars from 30, 40 years ago and find the remains of the people who either, either, either committed suicide or had a car accident and got killed in their own car. And they brought them back. And I watched them break the news to the family members whose bodies they recovered. And... Um, my conscience started getting to me. All these years, I was, af I was afraid that I was part of a murder. But I, I wasn't. I didn't know there was a body in there. I didn't kill anybody. But anyway, so I saw that. And it kept rewinding in my mind the night that I took that car, drove it down the van whip, smelt that odor, put that car into the river. All those years ago, that, a half a century ago. This video is about a half a century ago. And who's attached to this video is none other than the infamous Roy DeMeo, who law enforcement has linked to 200 murders. Now back then, he wasn't a serial killer. He was just starting to murder people. First murder that we that I am aware of happened in July of 1973 in a restaurant's parking lot in Nassau County. Okay, I'm getting all over the place. So anyway, back to what I what I'm trying to say is I saw this, and I definitely believe in a higher power, our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm a devout Catholic and I've always been my whole life. And it was almost as though he was saying, you gotta do this. You gotta tell people about this. Tell law enforcement, do whatever you have to do. That was my mission from him. A lot of you are probably laughing, but that was what drove me that and watching um, Jeremy and Adam bring closures to families that were sometimes 10 and 20 years out. So I reached out to Adventures with Purpose and I spoke to a guy by the name of De Doug. You guys who know what I'm talking about, he's the guy with the big beard. And I pitched it to him. 
I said, hey, this is what happened. And again, it's an unbelievable story. Mobsters, I mean, it's just, when you guys think about this, this is, I, 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 a week after this happened, that we found the thing, the car, I, I couldn't think straight. I, I, I couldn't sleep. I was constipated. I was, I, I was just, it was so much to process that my 69 year old brain had a hard time doing it. It shut down, it shut down, my brain shut down for multiple reasons, which we're gonna to touch on right now. So I reached out to him and he was 50 years under salt water with that current, there's not gonna be anything left. And then he said, well, I'm going in October. This was a year and a half ago. In October, we're gonna to go to New York, which they did. And he never, I guess he just, didn't think there was no point. Even though I told him, you don't you need your sonar because I left the lights on that car 50 years ago and I know where it landed. 17 feet of water, I could see the whole thing lit up. Almost like, like from, like from God, put the light. And our Lord must have been telling me, you know where it is, it's there. Do something about it. Now, even though it is much more likely than not that if there was a dead body in that trunk, it was a bad guy. It was a mafia guy. But that mafia guy, just like if I did something stupid, I got a beautiful 14-year-old daughter. I would want her to at least get my remains so I can get a proper burial. Proper burial. And get this off my conscience. You know, it was on my conscience. Not that I did anything. Let me tell you something. When you guys see something, you can see it. It's far better for you. It, a real bad thing. You saw a, a traffic accident, saw somebody dead. Okay, it processes, and that's it. I never saw nobody back in 1974. Before I smelt it, I literally... I tasted it. I went, what the hell? And then, then I followed my nose behind me. It was coming from the trunk. Some people might say, why didn't you just open the trunk up? Well, I didn't have the keys to the car. The, the ignition switch was popped and a screwdriver was stuck in it. And that's how I started. So I didn't have any way to get in it. Plus I was being followed by a member of organized crime. Because now when I took the car, of course I need a ride back to South Jamaica, Queens, and I had this guy Minsky phone. But, but okay, I, I don't wanna get all over the place. I'm very easily distracted. Don't forget, I was brain, my brain had been compromised by all this stuff that's been going on for the past month. Not to mention the anticipation of three months, but we planned this. So, tasting, a murder is far worse than looking at somebody dead, tasting it. So anyway, Doug passed on it. So I go, I gotta do this myself. So I bought myself a $2,000 drone and I went there with my toy submarine. You see the video, you can, we'll leave a link in the description for that video. So I kept trying because I'm being driven by the man upstairs. So I got to do something. So the divers were out spending ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 on divers coming down, which is probably what this uh, would have cost, maybe 20000 for this type of a operation. That, and, 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 and again, my hat goes out to uh, Ed and all the people with the boat safety thing. You'll see um, uh, Jeremy uh, has their information on his channel. Just check them out. They, we couldn't have did this without them they're, they're, because Jeremy and Adam brought a little flat bottom boat. Uh, I didn't realize that they had to cross that channel. It, it, they, they couldn't do it. That, I mean, these guys risked their life. Every part of this journey for those two divers 
They risk their life. I want you guys to understand that. I want you to like and subscribe. Go on their channel and pump them up. They are the true heroes. All of those divers. They, they, that, that one boat is a, a Navy SEAL attack boat that cost us taxpayers $900,000. They sent an almost a million dollar boat to make this and dive cream and all the special equipment and the, and the, and the, um, the uh, walkie talkie system, which they only had one. So like, subscribe, donate to their channel so that they have two. When those two divers were in the water, they actually got separated and it was my job to watch the bubbles so the tide didn't take them out. They didn't lose their life. Holy crap, what it took for all of this to come to fruition. It was like, what? And they went right to it. They went right to it. Adam is the one that found the car and found the steering wheel and the dashboard and other stuff. So I still have not yet seen what was left of that car that I put in there a half a century ago. Now, Jeremy found the bone, both. Now we don't know whether or not that bone is human or not, but from what I learned by this picture, it sure does look like that's exactly what it is. So anyway, I just wanted to tell you guys about what it took to make this happen. And I'm not doing any more videos on this subject until, until all that video is up. And then, and then of course, the cop confrontation. Oh, wait till you guys see that. Guys, you, you can't get this type of video anywhere else. My numbers are like this. I got like 3,000 subscribers. They, those other guys got almost between the both of them. Jeremy and Adam, they got friggin' um, almost a million. I mean, I, I, you know, I'm putting my heart and soul, not only that, my 14 year old daughter, she's the one that makes all the comments, types all the comments for me because her dumb ass father don't know how to do that shit and my spelling sucks. So to, that's, you know, so for a little girl who, who oh, oh, by the way, is valedictorian, I forgot to mention that. My daughter was valedictorian, she graduated the eighth grade, now she's gonna be in high school Tuesday. Ah! So let's make everybody happy. Only, only like 8% of the guys that view my channel are subscribed. Push the button. I would do it for you. Yeah. Okay, now where was I? Where was I, cameraman? Meanwhile, when I was in New York, we had a little downtown. Down, down time. So I went downtown. <laughs> I went downtown. I was on First Avenue and 14th Street. And I said, oh shit. I robbed that bank back in 1974 for the FBI. That's what I did. We're gonna show you the newspaper clippings. So I was on site. So I said, let me do this. I did this video before, but now I'm on site. And I can point out about where the cop was, what happened, where the FBI was. And we're even gonna show you a picture of me, Special Agent Al Garber, my friend Captain Henry Walker from the East Rutherford Police and uh, Detective Bob Collinary from Colstat Police, all retired now. And I'm gonna show you a picture of all those. Al Garber actually came to my book party in Elaine's back in 1996. And so he flew all the way in from Minnesota. What a great guy. What a great agent, a real true hero. A real true hero. So we're gonna, sh I'm gonna put this video up uh, uh, about the bank robbery that was done under the uh, auspices of the FBI. I don't know if that's, is that the right word? I don't know. I, I only went to the eighth grade, so don't make fun of me. Okay, so um, that's where we are. And again, guys, push the button. I mean, really, I, 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 I very seldom ask this, but you know, this time I brought you guys, I brought history what we did last month was new york city organized crime mafia history this story has never been told and not only that you guys get to see that happen in real time i mean holy crap holy crap thank our lord for what he did see you on the next one